Is it true that you slept on the floor because you didn't believe that you deserved to sleep on a bed? Oh, yeah. Wow. What what drove you to that point? Because that's, I mean, that's kind of extreme, right? People might see that as well, very extreme. That's like the bottom of my um, craziness and low self-esteem, not even deserving a bed to sleep in. I saw that when I believed my thoughts, I suffered. When I questioned them, I did not suffer. And I've come to see that this is true for every human being. It takes a very open mind to identify the thoughts that are that we don't want to think, those very things we want to go away, to actually invite them in, move them from our head to paper, and there they are stopped. Mm. They're stopped. You know how to stop the mind, how to stop this suffering, this this head from rolling. Okay. Move those thoughts from my head to paper and then question them. So I, I've heard you say that you were depressed for over a decade. Um, is, is that true? Oh, maybe more than a decade, oh, wow. but um, um, honey, very much so, debilitatingly so. Hmm. Yeah. Now, when you're in that, um, that like 10, maybe more um, period span of being depressed, did you ever think you would get out of it? What was the dude? Was there any hope while you were in the moment of, of getting out of that situation? Hmm, that's an interesting question. I saw it as hopeless. Hmm. Um, I saw it as so hopeless. I think that I was just so stuck in that kind of darkness that there wasn't any room for eventually when it became so tough. I used to just, you know, scream for help. Like, hmm. like so maybe that would be on um, some kind of hope that something would respond and answer. So wh when, how did that hope come? What, what was, what did you do to get that hope, to get that light, that light at the end of the tunnel, as, as they say? Well, by some grace, I saw in an instant how all suffering was created and how to end it. Mm. And and by some grace, what, like, like decades later from my 40s to here in my 80s, um, so far so good. Mm. And people would ask me, you know, what was this radical shift? My children were stunned. My, their friends were stunned. And I was uh, such an agoraphobic that um, I didn't have a lot of friends, but my family, it's immediately the the difference was like, who is this mom? Who is this yeah. person? It was that dramatic. And um, what I saw is simply that when I believed my thoughts, I suffered. And when I didn't believe them, I didn't suffer. And that's where self-inquiry was born out of that, that, um, that awareness which um, came after the fact these questions that i invite the world to um to um maybe contemplate that maybe suffering what they feel there's no way out of is it true that you slept on the floor because you didn't believe that you deserved to sleep on a bed Oh, yeah. Wow. What what drove you to that point? Because that's, I mean, that's kind of extreme, right? People might see that as well, very extreme. That's like the bottom of my um, craziness and low self-esteem, not even deserving a bed to sleep in. Hmm. Yeah. What, what, can, what can drive people to that point? Why do they feel like they're not deserving enough to even have something as simple as a bed to sleep on? Well, you know, an, an even mild depression is worth hearing what I discovered for some of us. Mm. Um, it's an, I saw that when I believed my thoughts, I suffered. When I questioned them, I did not suffer. And I've come to see that this is true for every human being. It takes a very open mind to identify the thoughts that are that we don't want to think those very things we want to go away to actually invite them in move them from our head to paper and there they are stopped mm. they're stopped you know how to stop the mind how to stop this suffering this this head from rolling okay 
move those thoughts from my head to paper and then question them. And this questioning that I invite people to, it's an exercise in stillness. It takes mindfulness and a very open mind because we are, after all, up against the second most powerful thing that we face, which is the ego, the ego. Mm -hmm. Something that I, I see you do a lot with your work is ask the question, is this true? So uh, yeah. I saw you go through an exercise where you, where someone um, had a list of certain beliefs and thoughts they had about um, a certain thing that happened to them. And mm -hmm. you ask over and over again, is this true? Is this true? Why is that such an important thing to ask if it's even true? Well, it's like that list of things I call a judge your neighbor worksheet. So they people anchor in a situation, a situation, time and place where they were experiencing anger, depression, frustration, and to identify what they were thinking and believing as they and move those thoughts from mind to paper. So there it is in response to those six questions there is the cause of their suffering in that situation that they were meditating in as a way of filling in the worksheet and so one belief at a time i invite people to ask in that situation where you were believing the thought for example she hurt my feelings to anchor in that situation and to listen closely to be there now anchor there mindfully she hurt your feelings is it true that person hurt your feelings is it true now the ego would want to say the answer is yes yes but this is an exercise in stillness we only want to know the truth she hurt my feelings. Is it true? So it's either yes or no. So you can see this is an exercise in stillness. We have to be there, mind, there now in that situation, anchored there with that person. And it gives us opportunity when we're not so hurt to listen more carefully. And if the answer is yes, it's yes. And if we find, oh my goodness, that's not true. The answer is no. Now, both questions are equal. We're only looking for the truth. So in that is where we lose equality. It's like we believe it, but we go, oh my gosh, it wasn't true. Or, oh yes, it is true. She hurt my feelings. Mm. And then the next question is, in that situation, get still, meditate in, in that situation, time and place. How did I react? What happened when I believed that thought? And then we meditate in that situation, then from this now. Hmm. And witness. what did I say? What did I say that was maybe harmful, accusing? What were, what were the emotions I was experiencing? What images of past future were in my head? I'm meditating in how I reacted when I believed the thought. Hmm. And then the next question is, who would I be without the thought in that same situation, stay anchored in that place, time and place with that person? Would I be without the thought? She hurt my feelings. Now. That gives me opportunity to drop my, drop my accusations and listen to that person very clearly, as clearly as I can. Even if I can't see their faces, maybe it's been so many years ago, there's a feel to it. Hmm. And we sit in it, who am I? And we listen again, because we can hear it if it's, if it's even though it's so old, 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 how remember, well, how could it hurt our feelings if we don't? So there is, there's something there, who would I be without it? Just listening. And I find, um, I find Brenda was, 
the thing I love most about my life is my ability to listen, hmm. listen to the people in my life. So this work has taught me that. Who would I be without the thought she hurt my feelings? Hmm. Listening and oh my, the compassion that sometimes takes that place of suffering, the, the, the humility, the humbleness in listening and of being wrong and, and, um, and when I see how I treated that person in my attitude, I see how familiar is that, that attitude, I'm right. And, and this work affects our life. When we experience that attitude after that, we don't remember we've done that work. But we feel it, there's something there and it just kind of drops and we become better listeners. It's, it's kinder, more aware human beings. And we begin to understand the cause of our suffering is what we're thinking and believing and how we react when we believe the thought. So she hurt my feelings, what's another opposite? Okay, I hurt her feelings. Okay, that that can really burn. What did I say or do in that situation? So these are things that I can bring into the world. I can admit it. I can contact that person. I can apologize. And how do I make that right if it's too late in that with that person in, in that situation, for example? Uh, maybe I it's email or whatever. But let's say I can either way. I owe, I contributed to suffering in this world. So she hurt my feelings, turned around. I hurt my feelings when I hurt her feelings. You know, that's, mm. the term for that is guilt. Mm. And the, the ego's favorite food, as I love to say. <laughs> guilt and um and and so i oh how do i make that right i become a kinder human being and when i'm wrong you know or i feel i have a right to what i've said and done no that's a worksheet we can do better than i'm right in what i said that was hurtful and we can do better than that um and i'm like my own test tube so i I, I live the wisdom that um, I find inside when I get still and um, sit in this state of open-mindedness that I, I call self-inquiry. Yeah, I feel like when, especially when you're in those heat of the moment, heat in the moment of those feelings, uh, like you said, like she, were, um, she hurt me, she rejected me. It's, it's very hard to see the truth. Right and now is, is part of it also letting some time pass? Um, Cause I feel like speaking from personal experience, like when time passes, you're, you're able to look at the situation more logically instead of emotionally. Is, yeah. is there, is time a factor or should, or is this something you can do days after she rejected you? Never um, too late. You can, you know, our, like um, my mother died years ago, you know, and, and uh, it doesn't stop me from doing the work when those things occur to me. What did I say? What did I do? As m memory brings up those times and places that, you know, I'm, I'm not okay in me because I, you know, the ego that was running then is running now until I'm awake to it. Hmm. And so, you know, I, my mother doesn't have to live. People don't have to live in the world for me to still be angry at them. Mm. So it's a worksheet. And I go back to that time and place and situation where they hurt me so deeply. And then I judge them on that judge your neighbor worksheet. And then I sit in this meditative process, self-inquiry with those four questions as kind of guidelines, as bookends to hold me dropping into that exercise and stillness and those turnarounds. I've heard you say that anger is another form of fear. What do you what do you mean anger, by this? Anger is it's 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 the experience of fear. It's a fearful state of mind. 
Like, and I mean, who would attack another human being if they weren't frightened? Mm. Who would go to war if they feel like, you know, they had to defend themselves? You know, it's, it's fear. And, def- and defense is the first act of war. Again, we can do better. We can move that war going on with that person, how they hurt me, what they said, what they did, and move it from my head to paper before I even consider war. Hmm. It's, there's another way. You know, I would have to go to war. And defense is the first act of war. Hmm. I would have to go to war if I did not have self-inquiry. My ego would say, well, this is a matter of survival. No one can take advantage of me. It's just not right. I'm a warrior for right. You know, but war is not right in my world. We can do better. And that's my invitation. We can't do better until we're a little more awake as as a human race. Hmm. But you know, no two people live in the same world. You have yours, I have mine, we each have our own. So, you know, I, it's war of the worlds. And, you know, until I deal with my own world and, and take care of that one. And then I can understand all worlds because all wars, it's all wars are within me. Mm. The human race lives in me. They are who and what I believe them to be. Now, I, I heard you, um, this reminds me of a story that I heard you tell once about someone who held held a gun to your stomach. Um, mm-hmm. And and you kind of related what you just said to that story. Can you can you dive into that a little bit? Yeah, it was it was um, um, very late in the evening, maybe midnight, maybe 1am even or two. And I was walking, I love to walk at night. And it was, it was out in, in let's say the wilderness, no homes, no nothing. And, um, and um, um, it was beautiful evening, the river, the moon, it was uh, just glorious. And um, then evidently, I was unaware of a man was actually living there, or for whatever reason, he was there. But he um, walked up and, oh, gosh, basically short story he said i'm going to effing kill you mm. and and the sun i mean the the moon was just shining enough i could just see enough of his face and whether i could actually see it or not i could perceive it and i could also see the moon and the clouds and the sky it was amazing and smell the river and what i saw in his eyes was terror mm. he, he was it's scary to want to kill someone. It's scary to be someone in your turf. It's scary what the mind can create and just a woman out there walking. But um, he said, I'm going to effing kill you and gun in my stomach. And, and I looked into his eyes and I saw that fear and you know whether I did or not, it's what I perceived. And Here's the short version, Brian. Am I going to miss the last, what could be the last few seconds of my life in terror? Mm. In a future, a nano future, imagining that bullet, him pulling the trigger and that bullet going into me and the blood, I'll never see my children again. I'll never see, uh, my life is all of that terror. Or am I going to just appreciate what I do have? This is what the absence of fear looks like. Hmm. So, and and self-inquiry has given me this. I am not a special human being. This, anyone can answer the question, is it true if their mind is open to it? But as it happened, he didn't pull the trigger. As it happened. Now, I can imagine how do I react when I believe the thought, oh, I'm fearful and I'm joking, don't do it, don't do it. I mean, he's already frightened. Now he's in the presence of facing fear in front of him. And, you know, this is, this is agitation. I mean, one person in fear is enough. And, 
And um, yeah, I think I think that's all I have to say about that. Other than here I am, mm. here I am, gratefully. You know, people talk about compassion, but what self inquiry can give us? It's compassion beyond a definition, and and rather compassion as an experience. Mm. Anyone in pain, you know, it's on. No one, again, no one would harm another human being if they were not confused or fearful is a, another term for confusion. Hmm. How can we, how can we not let our, like you just said, not let our life just pass by us? And how can we be more in the moment and enjoy what's going on right in front of us? Because the unfortunate reality is, I would say right now, especially with all social media and technology and everything that's going on right now, a lot of people most people aren't really in the moment like that. They're not really actually appreciating what's going on right in front of them. Are there some ways that we can get better at, at actually not letting our life pass by and actually enjoying the moments that we're in? Yeah, you know, being in the moment is, um, it's, um, gosh, what's, what's the word? It's an idea. Being in the moment, it's an idea. But to... Um, to be out of the past and out of the future, we can be present, we're better listeners, we're, um, again, more compassionate, more understanding, we're wiser, because we're not conflicted in, in the fear of the future or the, the guilt of the past. That's confusing in itself. The question again, ask it again. I may have another answer as well. Yeah. How can we, how can we be more in the moment? How can we, um, how can we be more present and not, not just have life pass us by just like yeah. you talked about that moment a little bit with, um, with a gun to your stomach, right? You didn't want to miss that last moment. How can we just lock yeah. in and appreciate to the notice, moments that we're in? To notice what's imagined and what's not just to be aware of what's imagined and what's not and past or future are both imagined. Mm. So I'm not saying to deny what's running in your head at all. Just notice the difference between past, future, and now. Mm. And um, even now is the past. It's, it's, it's like now, gone now, gone now, gone now is gone. So um, to be as clear as we can be is another way of saying as wise as we can be, which is another way of saying as kind as we can be, which is another way of saying that is the, the, um, the pinnacle of happiness. Mm. Yeah, and we're left with a job and, and it's nothing we have to do, but it's just a natural way of being is a life of how can I help? How can I help? How can I help? And I don't have to go seek it. It's like, how can I help comes to me. It comes to it comes to all of us. And and self help is, you know, we're the one we're with. So that's always available. And, and I love that we all in, invite that self help. And for me, that self help is self inquiry. I've heard you say once that we're still worried about things from the past that we chiseled in rocks. What do you, what do you mean by this? So in other words, you're basically saying that humans have always been anxious and stressed and sad about the same stuff. It just maybe might be in a little different form in modern times. Can you, can you well, elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, it, it gets down to, and that's this, you know, that judge your neighbor, judge your neighbor worksheet that I've mentioned a couple of times, I put where the human race is limited it's I'm I'm sad or anger whatever it is I'm emotional because and I want I need they should they shouldn't I don't ever want to they are boom 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 done and it's a circle nothing else in there mm. that's it so that's what's on that judge your neighbor worksheet those are the questions and we fill it in and question it it's just 
self-inquiry uh, there's nothing there's nothing required more than an open mind and oh my it's it's um hmm. you know when we believe our thoughts we suffer when we question them we don't suffer and i've come to see this is true for every human being mm. and every language of the world now, how people out there might have some traumas from their past that are affecting them now as um, maybe a young adult or a, an adult. How do we how do we let go of those past traumas? And is it is it even possible to fully let go of all those past traumas? Or is there something that will always just stay with us? I, I can't let go of those traumas. I question the mm. I question what I'm thinking and believing in that trauma and it let's go of me enlightenment self-inquiry is it brings enlightenment i'm enlightened to the cause of what hurts and what doesn't in any given situation and you know what we what we worry about oh good it belongs on paper great move it from your head to paper and and um and meditate in is it true is what i'm believing in that situation true she hurt my feelings is it true now i get still i i move my attention to that situation then i'm there now and i am um i'm answering those questions in that situations and they set me they set me free not only of that situation but you know i I want, I need, they should, they should, there it is, it's all there. So the next time it arises, it's, it's, um, we're enlightened to it. Hmm. And grateful, it's like guilt is replaced with gratitude as a, as a way of, of living. You know, every footstep becomes so exciting. Everything you see becomes so exciting as it's not a substitute for guilt guilt was never a substitute it was a state of mind it was a trance the ego's trance and that's not a bad thing it just is here and what i refer to as earth school you know if you believed you notice what you believe here that that causes suffering like on, on our fears our our guilt our shames what we're thinking and believing around those situations that that um, as we experience the, that emotional, you know, if if everything we believed here and we died and we found ourselves in heaven as some believe it to be where there's no pain, there's no suffering, there's no hunger, there's no thirst, there's, just, you know, and we landed there and but there's only one flaw in the ointment. Everything you believed on earth, you believed in heaven. So where would you be? Mm -hmm. So self-inquiry wakes us up to not only a kinder world, but a kinder world. You know, and, and the world doesn't have to end violence and hate and can I end it in me? Mm. That's, it. That's it. I don't require it of any other human being. If I weren't invited, I'd just be living in my wonderful world and by some grace. Mm. By some grace, we're all interested in a way out of the suffering, short of alcohol, addiction, drugs, relationships, being wise, being smart, being, hmm, hmm there's another way. Hmm. Yeah, that's, we, all, we all qualify. Yeah, that's so important because there really is very little control you have over the broad society and the broad world. Like as an individual, you can try to play your part, right? But there's... There's only so much one person can do, but I mean, taking control of your inner world and how you let the outside world affect your suffering, like you said, that's, I mean, that's, that should be the number one priority, right? Yes. To, uh, to, um, to free, 
yourself is mm. to live an example and i don't know anything more powerful than that mm. you don't have to teach nothing you just just you just live it yeah you just live it and then people ask you know what is that and and uh, for thought at first i thought it was the water i was drinking or <laughs> Or something I, you know, but no, it was self inquiry, hmm. awakeness. What What do you think is a measurement of a good life? Um, so a lot of people try to measure uh, their life, how they stack up against other people, maybe monetarily, all this, all this, um, these bad ways, right? So, what do you think is is the actual measurement of a good life? Appreciating every moment. Hmm. That's a and 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 understanding that if i don't i have self inquiry and that brings me to sanity again so my last question for you is if you had a minute with your younger self what would you tell her maybe 2 minutes oh i'd sing to her i'd say you are so beautiful to me mm-hmm. can't you see <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah. yeah other than what she was thinking and believing hmm. oh that's what i would say to her i doubt it would wake her up hmm. she had earth school to uh to go through hmm. by some grace and um gift yeah this 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 uh life experience is it's um it's a gift once it's understood, <laughs> mm. it's a gift. Just for-